all, my name is Blair. This is Teresa, a Smooshmallow. And today I'm going to be doing my January wrap-up. This year I'm going to work really hard on getting a wrap-up for every month and talking about each book I read because I think it's going to be so beneficial to be able to go back and see what books I read and what I thought about them. So, January 2020, very successful. I went to an awesome New Year's party and I'm working at a library now so I have plenty of time to read and I went to Las Vegas because I live in Los Angeles, if you didn't know. Hi, Blair, LA, and my parents live in Las Vegas, so I usually go out and I listen to an audiobook on the way and on the way back. And so I listen to two audiobooks and three physical books. I'm currently listening to an audiobook, which I might finish today because it's the 31st of January, so I mean there's a chance that I'll have six reads, just in case I will talk about that book on next month's wrap up. So I started an audiobook over the holidays and I finished it in January and that book is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and it was an audiobook that I read on script. The Unhoneymooners is about a girl named Olive who has the worst luck possible but her twin sister Amy has the best luck possible. So we start off this book hearing about all their escapades, there's a wedding. She's at her sister's wedding when she and her enemy, Ethan, who is her brother-in-law's brother, um, are the only ones who don't eat the buffet food and everyone gets sick except for them. So they're the only ones who can go on the honeymoon. So they go to Maui. It's full of fun and romance. Of course they hated each other at the beginning of the book, but you'd have to listen to figure out if that actually is a thing towards the end, but it, it was so amazing. The writing was a smash hit. I always love Christina Lauren's books. This just came out so I had to read it. As far as the plot goes, I really thought it was hilarious. Our narrator was really, really good. One thing I admire about narrators is when they do voices for other characters. So this narrator was doing Ethan's voice and it never felt out of place. It always felt like I was there with her experiencing all this, like I was the main character. And I love that when an audiobook can make me feel like I'm actually there. The plot was really creative. One day, Christina Lauren, this smash hit writer duo, were just sitting around drinking wine and they were like, huh, it'd be funny to write a book about people who don't like each other who go on a honeymoon. And that idea just sprouted into this book. It seemed very just like pure creativity and pure love for what they do and I, I just love their love for writing. Their writing style is very specific. I wish that I could write like them someday. Side note, I'm currently trying to figure out if I want to continue writing this book I started. I want to start taking classes so I can learn how to write books. Funny enough, I kind of missed quite a bit of like English because I went to a Spanish school at the beginning of my education and then I moved to an English school, but by the time I got to the English school I had missed all the stuff they already learned and it got lost in translation. So there's a lot of things that I like don't know fully and you know I'm in art school now so I don't really use any of those but I want to write a book and I want to create something with my words and so I want to I wanna go to school maybe take a couple classes um, at a college or something and learn how to do that. Alright so now moving on to book two, a physical book I read Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. This just came out, her books are amazing, I talk about her all the time. I think I've read all her books so far and this one did not come up short. I loved this one. I did give it 4 out of 5 stars. Um, her other books I've definitely rated better, but not all of them, so I don't know where I'd rank this, but it was pretty good. So this is a story about a mother and a daughter, and um, the mother's name is Morgan and the daughter's name is Clara, and Morgan got pregnant when she was really young, and so she's a very overprotective young mother trying to tell her 16 year old daughter that she can't, you know, go out and be a loose teenager, like she needs to stay home and have all these rules, but Clara hates that. Big tragedy that happens, of course, because it's a Clean Hoover book, and it was interesting watching the characters figure that out. The writing, of course, was amazing. As far as the plot goes, I felt like we were on the edge of our seat for too long. 
there was some moments where I was like, just tell us already. And I know that like builds suspense, but sometimes if it takes too much of the book, I just feel annoyed. So like that was the reason why I adopted a star, but otherwise it was a great book and I definitely recommend this one because Clean Hoover is amazing and I almost own all her books. I want to have a whole section of my bookcase just for her. The third book I read was another physical book. It was How to Make Friends with the Dark by Kathleen Glasgow. I gave this book five out of five stars. If you don't know, she wrote another book, Girl in Pieces, which I listened to last year and I had to pick up her second novel. Her writing is so good. It's unlike anything I've ever read. Whether it's an audiobook or a physical book, I love reading her stuff. It's like drinking water. That's how I would describe it. It's very refreshing and lyrical and smooth and I loved every minute of it. It's about a girl named Tiger and she loses her mother at the beginning of this book. And we just watch her going through, you know, foster care and figuring out what she's gonna do. She's just this young girl who lost her mother and she has no one else. One thing I loved about this book was that I could see that Kathleen's writing has grown and to follow an author and see her, you know, not just get better but grow and change and evolve was really awesome. I, I haven't really had that with that many authors and so I'm really excited to see what else she puts out. As far as the plot goes, it wasn't that like crazy because it's very character driven, it's just us watching Tiger try to figure this out. It is over 400 pages, so it, it is a big contemporary. It's over 400 pages, so it's quite a big contemporary, but I was, you know, really motivated to finish it, and it only took me a couple days, and, you know, with school and everything, that's actually, like, really good, because I tend to forget that I, you know, have a goal. My goal this year is 50 books. I hope I can do it. All right, so the next book I read was, this is kind of an epic love story by Karen Callender. And this was an audiobook that I listened to. It was only like six or seven hours long. I finished it really quick on just one trip to Vegas. And I liked it. Um, I did only give it two stars. This story is about a boy named Nathan in a small town and his best friend moved away when he was younger, but he comes back to town and shenanigans ensue. As far as the character goes, Nathan to me wasn't that interesting. He was very flawed, and like flawed characters are fine, but he was so flawed till the last moment of the book that I just couldn't, I couldn't see myself forgiving him for all the things he did. And you know, main characters don't have to be perfect. They can be flawed, but to me, it, like, it made it harder for the book to end. I felt like it was a very quick ending because he redeemed himself so quickly that I like was like, whoa. The side characters were really layered and I, I loved all the side characters. As far as the writing goes, I did think it was a little choppy and I was listening to it, so it can be hard to focus, but I was, I was really enjoying it. It just seemed kind of like, ooh, 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 ooh. We were always starting a new day and it, it just didn't flow. One thing that I did like about this book was that LGBT was very normalized in this world. So a lot of YA books that have LGBT characters are, you know, fighting. Like they're oppressed and they're fighting to, you know, come out of the closet and be free. But this book, interestingly enough, it was normalized. Like they did not talk once about, you know, how the main character was gay or they actually didn't even say what his sexuality was, so I wouldn't even say he was gay, maybe he's bisexual, something else, I don't know, but he was in love with a boy, so that was really fun to watch characters and have that normalized LGBT life. I appreciated this because, you know, I haven't really listened or read it before. I thought it was a big step forward and I hope that more books nowadays can do that because they don't always have to be sob stories. Sometimes it's just normalized. Next book I listened to was Kings, Queens, and In-Betweens by Tanya Bateju. Sorry if I butchered your name. I gave it three out of five stars and this book was so good. Another trip to Vegas and I loved every second of it. I did give it three stars. It wasn't like the best book I've ever read, so it was, you know, just kind of average, but I definitely enjoyed myself and I was hanging on every word of the narrator. So this book is about a girl named Nima and she identifies as a lesbian and she's in high school. At the beginning of the book she goes to a drag show and it kind of just 
goes off from there. Like you see her make new friends and really grow as a human being and it was so, so good. And also the side characters like Winnow, like I was so in love with her and I just loved that. As far as the debut goes, I loved this and I think she did an amazing job for her first book and I can't wait to see where she goes because I'm totally gonna read her next book. I liked how this book made me feel comfortable to just sit back and listen. I didn't have to like try hard to listen to this audiobook because some audiobooks are like that. But I was on the edge of my seat for a lot of this book because I wanted to know what was next. Every time I took a break from it, I wanted to start it again. And I think that's what audiobooks should be, like, and books in general. Like, you should want to pick it up, and that's what this book did. As far as the narrator goes, I thought she was totally believable. I felt like she was a 16-year-old girl, and most narrators aren't. So I loved how believable she was. And then finally, the last book I read was As Many Nows As I Can Get by Shanna Young Doll. And this book is about a girl named Scarlett who lives in small town Colorado and it's just her going off to college, dealing with a boy, David. I did give it one star. I don't mean to end this video on a sad note because I really didn't like this book. Uh, it took me like three weeks to read because I was really procrastinating it. But at one point I got past the 200 page mark and I was like, okay, I need to finish it. I need to see if it redeems itself. And it did not. The characters to me were too self-pitying. They had so many problems and it was like, okay, first world problems. Like you need to get yourself together, stop whining, and actually take control of your life. And like, you know, characters can be whiny, but they need to like go somewhere with that. They need to, you know, grow from that point. And she just didn't grow. Like the whole time she was just like, mm, I'm sad and helpless, but you're not. Like she's not, and that's what bothered me. The writing to me was very messy. I got lost on a couple of the plot points because it goes back and forth between the past and the present, which like plenty of books do, but the way she did it was very confusing to me. The plot because of this was very confusing and I didn't feel like I was reading something fresh. And the end of the book was just kind of like, meh. It didn't redeem itself and I was kind of sad. It is a debut so I, I am interested to see if she comes out with something else but I'm sad that I gave this book one star, but... Okay, so that was my January reads. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love making YouTube videos, and it's been so hard being away from you, but, you know, college and family and moving and craziness, so I'm glad to be back, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try my best to be doing monthly wrap-ups every month, so keep me accountable. I want to do it. I want to make sure that I have a video diary of all the books I read this year and I mean hopefully next year too. I know a lot of people don't do wrap ups anymore because it's kind of stressful but I think it holds me accountable. I feel like this month when I knew I was going to be doing a wrap up I was like okay I need to get going I need to you know read a book when I'm just sitting on my phone. I've been trying this new thing of not guilting myself into reading but just you know not stressing about how many pages I read, just, you know, just read a couple pages a day and then maybe that will spiral into more pages. And I've also been coloring a lot. I bought a coloring book and I've been listening to my audiobook while I color and that's been a great relief for me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.